Before we get started, I'd like to explain much more thoroughly exactly what a sloper is and how we derive one. A sloper is a basic pattern used as a building block or template for all of our pattern making purposes. It does not include ease other than being able to take a deep breath. It does not include style lines and it does not include seam allowance to sew it together. It's as if it's a jigsaw puzzle to put together to create a second skin for the body. This is the type of sloper we will be using in this course because it goes down to the hips. It's called a torso sloper. I will be draping the sloper to get this shape. I will actually take a piece of muslin fabric and I will shape it on our model, transfer it to paper, make it perfect, which is called truing it up, check it on the model, and then transfer it to the oak tag. This is called oak tag paper. It's very stiff as you see. And this is what I'll use to create our blouses, dresses, skirts, jackets, and coats. And I'll use part of it actually for the pants. Now, before I show you how to create a sloper and to um, where to put the darts, what the darts are, and how to change the darts, I'd like to show you different style slopers because there are many different kinds, not just the torso sloper. So that you'll understand that there are many different shapes of slopers, I have laid out several quarter scale slopers. These are one quarter of the size of an adult sloper. In this course we're going to be using the torso, which this is the waist, so this comes down to the hips. This is the bodice sloper coming down to the uh, waist only. This is a one dart bodice front sloper, two darts front sloper, and this is the back dart with a waist dart and a shoulder dart. This is a skirt sloper, back and front, two different sleeves, one without a dart, one with an elbow dart to give it a little shaping, and then a pant sloper, and this has just enough dartage to fit the body. To show you how to arrive at a sloper and how to manipulate and shift darts around and what a dart is, I will now demonstrate on a half scale form how to create this sloper, the bodice front sloper. So just to reinforce that you understand what a sloper is and what a dart is, I'm going to take a piece of fabric, two-dimensional, and I'm going to show you how to drape a sloper to the waist, making one dart to accommodate the mound or the fullness of the bust. Now I will do the one dart from waist to bust and this will be much more thoroughly explained when I drape it on our model, Morgan. See I'm pinching all that excess to conform to the body. And we always start with our darts all the way to the fullest or highest part, which is the apex. This fold or folded fabric is what we call a dart. The only marking I will have on here is the dart, whereas on a sloper we'll have many markings.
So we take the muslin sloper, we transfer it to the hard paper, and we manipulate the paper pattern or sloper to create the style that we want. Let's take a look at a half scale sloper that's marked with one dart from the bust to the waist. This sloper only comes to the waist. It's not our torso sloper. I couldn't do the same exact thing with a torso sloper. But this is a little bit of a lesson in manipulating the darts around the body for different style lines. And I want to show you how changing the dart from one place to the other does not necessarily change the shape of the garment. As you see, this garment or this little sloper has the basic waist dart from the apex. We always start at the bust line, the highest point of the bust line, to manipulate and then when we have a final pattern we shorten it so because we don't want the dart to go all the way to the tip of the bust. This is the waist dart. This is where a French dart would be on the side seam, a side bust dart, mid armhole, shoulder tip, mid shoulder, mid neck, center front neck, and center front waist. Let's see what happens if I move those around. Okay, so we'll put this one by the side and we'll start with the French dart. I'm going to cut on the French dart line and I'm also going to cut on this dart line. I'm going to shift all of the dart. This is called slash and spread. I'm actually just going to close this and of course before I finished the pattern, I would fill this in with paper. But you can see where this dart is now here. So this is the French dart. And I'm also going to pin or tape this together to create a three-dimensional shape. And let's stack that right there. Next, I have the bust dart right here. I'm going to slash on the bust dart right to the apex and close the original dart. As you can see, all of the bust intake or the dart intake is now in this area. Again, I will be teaching you how to fill this in with paper and make it a pattern. So let's close this one. And stack it. And you see, they're the same shape. The line is in a different place, but they're the same exact shape. Next, mid armhole. Slash slash and spread and close this one. So now our style line, instead of being right here, this line would of course disappear entirely, the seam would be here, the dart. Again, same shape, right? Same shape. So we're going to stack these up. Next, we have the shoulder tip. This reminds me of the 70s. If you look at the history of costume, you'll see that darts and style lines change and they kind of repeat themselves. So let me fill this dart in so we have the visual that this is the original dart. And I'm going to slash. and close that dart. So now my style line is here. Same shape. As you can see, I put these all together and they're creating the very exact shape, but a different line.
mid shoulder. Same shape again. Mid neck. Center front neck. center front waist. I think I'll slash this side. Hmm. Nope. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's fine. Didn't want that to run into each other. And then I'm going to do one more, but I'm going to do two darts. There are many garments that actually have two darts. And this, um, this is a lower, this is a side bust dart, but unlike this one that's coming right under the armhole and facing down towards the bust, this one will reach up. And when we do this, two darts, we close half of this dart. So I think I'll do this. I'm going to close half of that dart, leaving half of it there. So this would be a dart and this would be a dart. Again, if they're completely, this would have to be sewn up. So for now, I have to close it by overlapping it entirely. Okay, so let's put this one under there. So these are a little clearer to see. And then also, after we have manipulated the final pattern, we never leave the point, the tip of the sewn dart all the way here. We always back it away. So the final dart would be backed away. Um, let's see if I can show you a couple of these. For instance, the dart would end here, and I'll teach you how to do that. We don't ever have a dart come right to there. You look like um, the pointy, pointy bras from the 40s. I think especially the side dart's a great one to show. Let's see where that one is. This one. So this one we would back away to around here, and this one here. So right over the fullest part, you never see the actual dart. So that gives you an idea of manipulating darts around to keep the same shape. Now let's move on to our courses. <music>